Faraz Shaukatali. And a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. And this morning we have a very special guest, an internationally acclaimed international concert pianist. Uh, before I introduce uh, our guest to you, uh, just to bring you up to speed with what's happened yesterday, uh, the former governor of the Central Bank, Mr. Arjun Mahendran, uh, was uh, giving a, a second day of evidence and he was rather involved. He spent approximately eight hours at the Presidential Commission and uh, uh, we're told that uh, he may well be appearing today. But let's take a break from the bond. There is life uh, beyond the bond, of course, and um, indeed, uh, it comes in the shape and form of Shani Diluca. Good morning to you, Shani. Good morning. An internationally acclaimed concert pianist. What is your connection to Sri Lanka? Actually, I'm Sri Lankan. But Who I was, are you? Yes, but I was born in Monaco, in Monte Carlo, okay. and I was raised there, and I live in Paris since 20 years. Wonderful. Monaco, this is the land of Princess Grace and so on. Exactly. The Prince family is very close to me, to my story, because I started the piano thanks to Grace Kelly, the Princess okay. Grace Kelly, because when she came to Monaco, she wanted to put the culture in the center of the, of the society, of Monaco society. Right. And she organized this program in kindergarten right. to find out the 10 best talented children uh, to do classical music, and that's how I was chosen. Really? Now then, let's, let's listen to some of your music. The Symphony of the Birds, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's my latest CD. It was released, that was a few weeks ago on, on French national TV. It's, right. it's uh, like the Grammy Awards, so okay. we were chosen to play this. And you could hear the, 19, the Nightingale playing yes. with the piano. And it's all a project about classical music with the song of the birds. And in Sri Lanka, you have incredible birds, actually. So it would be nice with the Sri, Sri Lankan birds. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. So, um, uh, the... Um, You've been, you've been internationally acclaimed. The, the London Sunday Times described you as passionate, sensible, and immensely gifted. An art magazine said her prodigious talent, brilliant personality, and her capability of squeezing out the music to its last essence is rare and beautiful. How do you cope with these sort of um, accolades that you get? 
Or oh, actually, you know, there's a famous uh, opera singer, Maria Callas. She says, yes. I never listened to the, the good reviews, but also to the bad reviews and the good reviews. Right. I think the, the art, art is something very personal, and the public is giving you back the real uh, intensity of music. Of course, it's always wonderful to have the recognition of, uh, you know, the great newspapers and great uh, uh, TV shows and mm -hmm. professionals. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's endless... Uh, work and it's a very mm, intimate work and it's uh, full of thanks yes I mean it's a very immediate uh, you know when you play in concert you have the feeling that people are with you and and it's it's bonding people together I mean how, how do you feel when you, when you're playing there you are all within yourself are you aware of this big audience uh, how, how do you feel? What's going on in your mind? Actually, the, the magic of music is that uh, classical music is a universal language. So I've been playing in Japan, in India, in Paris, in London. And when you play these pieces, it's talking about humanity and all these feelings. It right. can be sadness, joy, and uh, fear, anger. And, um, and when we play it, it's very personal, but it's also your soul connecting to the people's soul. Right. So it's a very um, special moment. The concert is a very special moment where people come into a silence. It's like meditation. Mm -hmm. And in every country, this feeling is very strong. That's why classical music has this power to make people in peace and to come into their own soul. So we are just connecting the souls together. Wonderful. Um, and where did, you, where did you find this... Uh, uh, this uh this music in you, where did you find it? Did you find it with your mother, Shivanti, or with your dad, Gilbert? Uh, are they no. musical? No, they, they're not playing at all musical. Actually, when I was chosen in this program in Mo Monte Carlo, they called my parents telling that it was a very special program and I had very high rates and my parents didn't want me to do this, uh, thinking I have to study, I have to do normal studies, which I did. I did pol political science, I did economical science, I had a, a, a degree. And, um, and finally, I, by myself, I, I discovered classical music, but I, then I entered the Paris National Conservatory, which is a very, very um, prestigious school. Mm -hmm. Only 15 people a year enter from oh. the world in this Paris Conservatory. And this is all thanks to the Grace Kelly Actu Foundation. Isn't actually, it? I, was, I was educated, and from this school, only few people entered the Paris Conservatory and actually I was the first Sri Lankan and Indian from the Indian subcontinent to enter this Paris Conservatory so it's a very high standard it's like a PhD degree right. and that's how I really got my education as a, as a pianist I see uh, I think we, we have another clip uh, that they will be playing now uh, <coughs> um, yes there we are um, Where, where are you playing this? Uh, where, where is this being played then? So that was also for TV, for national TV, French TV. I at, I they did some video clips of, uh, they chose a few artists to do this. And I, I was see. playing, this is a Chopin waltz. Right. It's a very melancholic waltz, which is actually very famous uh, in the m music world. Right. And it was very much uh, listened on YouTube. It was right. more than 200,000 people listening to this on YouTube. So I see. it's very touching because from all over the world, I have people, messages writing me right. that they really enjoy this music. And it's, it's very nice because no need to have words to connect with people. So you have a degree in political science. I did, uh, yes, it's called uh, prepa, prepa, political yeah. science, because I always was interested in too, you know, how the world is going and how we are connected to the world. What do you, how, what do you think is happening to the world? Actually, I think there are very wonderful things because now with internet, people are connecting from all different parts. So it, yeah. it should be a world of tolerance. It should be a world of communication. But somehow, when you see what's happening in, in the United States, when you yeah. see what's happening, even in France, the, the nationalism is, you know, the fear you, you, of the you, other. Yes, you live in France, you say. In I Paris. live in Paris since 20 so, years. So, uh, really, now, uh, has your parents sort of expressed grave concern to you? living in Paris in between all this trouble that's been going on in there? Of course, you know, I was, I was just thinking that when I was in Sri Lanka all these years, when the, there was this conflict in Sri Lanka, yeah. we were so scared about terrorist attacks and this yeah. control in the army. Now when I come to Sri Lanka, I feel freedom, I feel peace. But in Paris, 
there is fear because we had all these ter terrorist attacks. So the fear psychosis has gone out of Sri Lanka and has gone to Paris. That's so. what I feel. But yeah. of course, Par Paris people love to live. They love to go out to cafes, yeah. restaurants, and we didn't stop living that way. This French way of life is very nice. It's very positive, and we keep this hope, and we don't think about it too much. But of course, there is this fear now. So, so there is when you live in in Paris as you do now, you are mindful of. Of, the, of a security threat. Yes, because I travel so much, so I'm always in the you know uh, airports and train station, which is so crowded. And we do you do you consciously think, oops, you know what's happening yes, here? Yeah, because the army is everywhere. You have all these people with the guns and so you can't protect. miss them. You can you cannot miss. Of course, I I know that uh, people are trying to really forget about it and to keep the smile and hope that it's only the past, which was such a trauma in Paris. It was so but violent. The, 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 uh, the, the attack on the officers of uh, Charlie uh, Hebdo, uh, that, that really struck a chord with the people all over the world. Yes, actually it was very touching how the world was with, with us, with Charlie Hebdo, how the press, the liberty of the freedom of press is so important, the freedom of, of, of expression. And of course, all my Muslim friends, all these people are against what happened. That's mm -hmm. what we have to really defend. That. Um, uh, you know, Buddhist, Muslim, in Sri Lanka we have the example that all this community together. That's right. And in France also, I mean, 99% of the Muslims are very peaceful people. And uh, with all these attacks, you know, now fear has come. And uh, are you are you are you suspicious of uh, a sort of a Mediterranean-looking person or a foreigner? Not at all. I mean, I have yeah. all my friends and, yeah. you know, I can see even uh, in, in the United States with this Muslim ban, which yes. was such a shocking thing because like, we are... We have How to is that going down in your circles, in your sort of circle of art, music? Uh, and yeah. uh, surely you've not, been, you've not been immune to the news of what's happening in the United States. Of uh, course. How, how do you all react in your, in your world? In my world, I think, which is actually the human world, is art is something which is for connecting everybody together. So yeah. there's no links, there's no border between the countries, between the culture. And in, in the contrary, human soul is the same. Mm. The blood is the same color. So yeah. art is just, you know, it's a way to remind us that we are all equal. We are all the same people. Mm -hmm. And the politicians are trying to divide us. And we have mm. to, artists has also this role and this mission to, to remind that we are all equal facing the world and the world we all own the world we are all one in one world. we are all stakeholders in, in the world exactly and um, Shani um, you are uh, you are Sri Lankan you just happen to be born in in some foreign place yes. uh, was, uh, the, the the jet set capital of the world probably um, yeah. Uh, but you've be you you've maintained your links, and your parents have done well to do that with you, to uh, and your sister. Um, and your sister is in in London. She's in London, actually. She she's a wonderful pianist, and we were we were playing together in Sri Lanka. We didn't even the cover of High magazine, and right. we played really. And she has a very high standard, but she had got a degree and a bachelor in uh, finance and management and she has a big uh, so job in in london and so she she's not um uh into into the music commercially then no she plays for her pleasure but now right. she's with the trading okay. companies and okay. doing very well in london and but i'm yeah. very thankful to my parents because they always kept the link with sri lanka i speak sinhalese oh. i'm so happy to speak sinhalese with my even with the french accent right and i love sri lankan food i love sri lanka because the so what language do you speak then so i speak uh, french this is my first language it's french right. english italian right sinhala right and um, I'm trying to speak German. Okay. So, yeah. so we have a Sinhalese uh, program, which uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Van der Jaisek is a host. He may well be uh, telephoning you as we speak. Oh, great. Uh, but tell me, Shani, how, how important is, um, is music uh, in the pursuit of uh, togetherness and unity? You know, uh, as you know, we've... Our, our country has gone through an enormous trauma mm -hmm. that's over 30 years long. Yes. And um, how do you bring back, uh, how, what role can music, what role does music play 
in this whole, in the widest scheme of uh, unity, in pursuing unity. I think music is talking to the human feelings, and human feelings are everywhere the same. But I can say a beautiful story. I played in, of course, tomorrow night I'll be playing with the SOSL, That's with the, the Sri Lankan symphony. symphony, and the Sri Lankans are very open. It's a wonderful audience. And I played once in Matara, that was oh. a few years ago, for the tsunami victims. Right. So it was in a village. I played for them. I had an upright piano. And they were so thankful because with all what they have been through with the, so many people who died in the tsunami in Sri Lanka yeah. and all these families were together listening to my music, to the music I'm playing Mozart, Chopin, Debussy, Beethoven and there was, for them it was a moment of peace and coming together, you know, and making people feeling better. I think it's, it's healing. Music has a power of healing mm -hmm. and I played for people who have never listened to classical music before and I could feel how how happy they were and when the concert was ending mm. they clapped and they stayed and they didn't want to go and I had to tell them it was finished but they were still staying in the audience and it was a very moving experience. Did you play one more for them? Yes, even two more. <laughs> so that's a very beautiful uh, uh, proof that music is, is healing also people and making them feel better. So music has no, has no form, um, it has no smell. Uh, but it can reach places that other things cannot reach. Exactly, and also it's proved that uh, um, children who are doing classical music have a very good discipline and memory. It's also organizing your mind and also as physically there are proofs, you know, in Harvard and all these studies that it's also uh, curing people who have uh, Alzheimer and, you know, mental problems or physical problems. And also, when you put, um, you know, this uh, crystal, this ice mm. from, the, you know, from the snow, yeah. when you put Bach or Beethoven, the form of the crystal becomes very beautiful. So it makes harmony right. to the nature. It's also connected to nature. Right. And um, uh, we, we've got another clip as well. Uh, let, let's listen to that, shall we, producer? <laughs> So, uh, what will you be playing with the uh, Symphony Orchestra of Sri Lanka then? So this is my first time with them, so I'm very honored and pleased to play with Sri Lankan Orchestra. And I will be playing Beethoven, who was also very linked to the nature and very spiritual, uh, mystical composer. Mm -hmm. And I'm very uh, pleased to play this triple concerto with Gabriel Le Magadur, the violinist from mm -hmm. a very famous Eben Quartet. He plays in Carnegie Hall and all these Wigmore Hall, very right. famous places. Yeah. And with a cellist, Valentin Erben, right. Austrian cellist, and he plays in Vienna Concert House, in also very, very famous from Alban Der Quartet. So it's a nice trio with right. the orchestra, and the conductor is Keiko Kobayashi, a Japanese conductor. Right. Came especially from Tokyo to Sri Lanka. Oh, really? And this is going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Where, where are you playing? It will, it will be in Ladies College. Oh, at the auditorium. Ladies College Auditorium. Yes. Well, there you are. That's where you need to be uh, if you want to listen to this. Uh, uh, so, Shani, tell me, have you, did you ever meet uh, Grace Kelly, the Princess Grace? Actually, I was very young when she passed away, but right. I, I saw her a few times. Right. Now I'm very close to the Prince Albert and right. Charlene. Right. So they invited me to the palace to play, and the Prince family has been always very supportive, and because there are very few people from Monaco who did an in international career, right. and they are very art supporters, so the Princess Caroline and the Prince Albert are always very uh, aware of what I'm doing. And is it really the jet set capital of the world? It, of course, many famous people live there. I mean, Roger Moore, Charlie Bessay, Josephine Baker, and Roger Moore. Yes, the Bond man. James Bond. Yes. Have you heard of the Bond in Sri Lanka? <laughs> no. Have you? No, you haven't. No. <laughs> you, you need to ask your dad. He'll probably be following Bond. Yes. Well, we we've got a Bond. We've have a Mr. Bond because he's not. James, he's really? got another name. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, you, you've, uh, so you sort of went from from that Grace Kelly program or the, yeah. uh, uh, to, to greater things. Yeah, because we have an image of Monte Carlo as a jet set place. And yeah. actually, of course, there are many very famous uh, sports 
men are living there, but it's a very artistic uh, place. It's uh, the ballet, the dancing, the orchestra, the concerts. It's a very artistic center in Europe. So we have to remind also this. It's a very interna international. Yeah. It's 95 percent of foreigners. So I would yeah. be. I was always surrounded by many other countries. So all my friends were coming from all these different countries. So it's a very fascinating country. But of course, I live in Paris since 20 years, and Paris is also the human rights, you know, city and country. Right. So I'm also very happy in Paris. Are you are you involved at, in any activism on human rights? Are you an activist? You Actually, I mean, activist as for, for peace. Yeah. I think I feel as an art artist that we, I have a mission to, to give peace. So this year I'm doing a, a special program uh, with texts from human rights from famous artists who like uh, Khalil Gibran or Nietzsche or Shakespeare, mm -hmm. who talks about art and the power of art to link people together. So I play the piano and a very famous actor. I've been working with Sophie Marceau and Gérard Depardieu, which are very famous mm. actors. And there's another one called Charles Berling, and we play together uh, this concert for human rights. And for me, it's also a very important part of my, of my art. And how often do you come to Sri Lanka, Charlie? I try to come as, as often as I can. Yeah. Of course, uh, I used to come once a year. Now it's every one half years, two years, because I go very often to Japan and I play also a lot in India. Right. So it's difficult to find time to spend. So all my family here, sometimes I have even no time to see them. This time right. I have only one week in Sri Lanka. So, so do you find uh, things like Skype and WhatsApp useful? Yes, and Viber and all this great international <laughs> links and yeah. yeah of course and I keep on calling my family every day and yeah. and I'm always so happy to come to Sri Lanka. And where, where do you where have you parked your parents? Where do they live? Oh they live they have a beautiful house in Kohowala, Nugegoda. Right. Right. And it's uh, I have my piano there also my ah. in, in Sri Lanka it's a kawaii okay. and it's a very nice place. Actually we had even a concert in my in my house because it's a very beautiful living room right. and with uh, and my father is a painter so it's full of paintings okay. all over the house and yeah it's a very pleasant. So there is some art in you. Yes, absolutely. My father is a very interested in to art painting and poetry. He he wrote more than 300 poetry and few books that you can mm. even find. So I was somehow, and my mother is very sensitive to nature and very kind heart, so I was very lucky to have very open-minded parents, letting me traveling since I'm 16, traveling alone all over the world. We they must have been beside themselves. Oh, it was terrible for them, and going to Poland, to Russia, to did Germany. You, did you find that your mother doesn't have any fingernails left? <laughs> like that. No, actually, they're, they're very wise, but of course they call me when I take the plane, when I come off from the plane, when I take the taxi. Now they're used to it, but when I was 16, or, you know, when I was such a, alone, traveling alone. So do they speak to you every day? It still do, right? <laughs> even if I'm in, the, in Japan, or even if it's the jet lag is nine hours yeah. different, they would call. Right. The Sri Lankan family. Yes, <laughs> but you enjoy that. Yes, of course. I mean, you know, I'm traveling most of the time alone. You know, in the hotels, and so the family is very. How do you find that actually, as a lone female traveler? How do you find that? It's a, it's of course it's a unique experience, and sometimes it's not that easy to be always traveling alone. You have to be careful and. But at the same time, uh, when I play in, in the concert hall, that uh, suddenly 2,000 people come and listen to me, I don't feel lonely anymore. So it's, you know, it's a very paradoxical uh, career. I see. Um, <clears throat> do you feel safe when you travel, and, you know, when you're checking into these hotels and so on? And yeah. do you think that hotels can do uh, anything different uh, to, uh, for the female traveler? You know, I have uh, managers, so I have a very, very good team around me. I have uh, yeah. different manage for, managers for each country, one for India, from Japan, for Germany, mm -hmm. and they organize everything for me. So I have always a driver, I have an organizer taking care of me. So I'm always protected by my managers, and they're always checking, double-checking if I'm in the right hotel, the right place. So I, I never feel, really, I never had a problem in my life. And. Um, uh how many countries uh, have you played in? I didn't count, but I played in all continents, you know, I, play. I right. played uh, in Europe, in, in the States, in Japan, in India, only Australia, that's the only country. And what about Africa? Have you been to Africa? No, yet? not yet. I would love to go to Africa and North Africa also. I had an invitation to play in Morocco, right. but I could not, I was not free at that time. But, right. but of course, Asia and, and Europe uh, a lot. And my recordings are actually worldwide. 
uh, just you can find it everywhere in the world. So that's why I'm traveling so much. Do you have? Do you keep account of sort of how many performances you've given and what sort of composers you? Do you have statistics? Uh, I don't really count, but in a one, in a year, I'm doing between 60 and 70 concerts a year. Right. And of course, the composers. Uh, I've played all the composers from Bach to today's composers. So right. Of course, one life is not enough to play all what's written for piano. And you've, you've, um, what do you think of uh, audiences in Sri Lanka? Then are they receptive to your, to yes. your music? I think Sri Lanka is a very artistic country, very talented for many things, for Sri Lankan music, for the drums, you know, uh, art, for painting, and it's a very sensitive culture, very refined. Mm -hmm. And the audience Sri Lanka is wonderful. And since I'm 14, I'm performing every year in Sri Lanka, and it was was always full of people with young people, with old people, and it's a very mixed uh, audience. And uh, I've, I'm very thankful to the uh, Sri Lankan audience, and they're very faithful. So every time it's sold out, this concert, mm -hmm. so and it's a wonderful audience. And um, how did you, do you think that you've learned this thing, or is it that you have a, a natural talent? And, and when you went on this Grace Kelly program, uh, your natural talent sort of came out? You know, I think uh, I was very lucky. My destiny took me to this program as, as a classical pianist. Maybe there was some inspiration, mm. but 99% of the talent is work, right. I think. I mean, the, of course, the inspiration and, the, and the, the, the intuition, the sensibility is very important. And also the culture. I love reading, I love painting. This is also inspire me to play. And of course living, meeting people, all these different kind of people, they are inspiring me. But I was very lucky to have wonderful masters also, very famous, mm -hmm. like Leon Fleischer, Menlein Pressler, Murray Pariah, they are very famous uh, pianists, and they mm -hmm. are really great masters, you know, so I was also, I had a very um, high standard education. Mm -hmm. So it's both talent, work, and having great masters. Um, we, we have a request coming through. What, what is the request control room? I see. Uh, they, they, they'd like you to say, there's a viewer who says, could you, could you uh, say it in Sinhalese? Could you s tell them how you feel about Sri Lanka in Sinhalese? <laughs> Piano gahan, Lanka ve matha mahari adre Lanka vete. Ting mang singer katakran hadenwa. Mage me parents na dayo tikka mang singer katakran. Ting mang mang matahari ase singer katakran. We do. My my producer says that we have. Uh, uh, we also have uh, some people in Sri Lanka who speak in French, and uh, they're wondering whether you could say all the same things in French. Well, you know, uh, all I can say is uh, very well. Uh, um, thank you for that. Uh, now then, Shani, what do you think um, of Sri Lankan music? You must have, are you exposed to any of the Sri Lankan music? Of course, since I'm a kid, when we, we used to go for trips, I, yeah. I listen to baila, I play baila on the piano also, and of course, traditional music also, I'm very interested in. And, yeah. and uh, so I think Sri Lankan music is very nice and very musical with the voice, very often we connect with the voice. And uh, so I love Sri Lankan music, I listen, my family listens to Sri Lankan music, so I'm have you familiar. Have you, uh, have you um, introduced your... Um, friends in Europe to the baila and so on. Yes, I mean, of course, when we have a dinner, as I, with my French friends, we we don't really put baila, but no. uh, <laughs> but they ask, of course. And I did a project with more with Indian music, with sitar and tabla. Right. Okay. And that's a very interesting project, playing Schubert with sitar and tabla. Right. Indian uh, music. That's a very people love this project also, connecting Orient and Occident together. Um, I have a viewer who says, uh, your guest is very eloquent and impressive, and obviously she speaks from her heart. 
and it is not put on. Oh, that's nice. Shani Diluka, thank you very much for having been on Newsline. It's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, we wish you very well in your uh, in your quest to spread peace and uh, togetherness through music. Thank you. And very much. Uh, do pop by and see us whenever you're in town. Thank you very much, thank you Shani so much. Diluka. And that's it from Newsline this morning. We trust you enjoyed that uh, segment. In the meantime, we'll see you same time, same place, tomorrow morning. Take care and God bless.